Welcome to branding. Um, so we're going to go a lot deeper and take a much more expansive view of branding than what you would expect. Uh, what you would expect is talking about logos and colors and stuff, and we are actually going to cover that, but way to the end. Um, this presentation is really um, focused on order of importance, um, how things are. And the first thing that I want to talk about is what impact will you have on one of your viewers who happens to be a blonde sitting with their phone at night, right? Like, so you picture like, do you ever go in Google Analytics to the real-time analytics and you see those little dots? I love that page. I don't know why. There is something about that page that just mesmerizing to me. Um, so people are going to your website. In fact, for given the site that you guys all have, like there's somebody on all of your sites right now. Most of you, multiple people are there right now. What kind of impact are you gonna have in that person's life who's on your website right now? This person who's there. The problem that I faced years ago is I realized that that impact was so shallow that I was gonna have on that person's life. It was so shallow. It was like, great, now they know how many calories are in a burrito at Costa Vida. See ya, 30 seconds later they're gone, or now you know how much your class A RV weighs. See ya, have a good life, right? Your value to that person is the same as the dude at Home Depot that says aisle nine. That's your value in their life, right? But we've all also had the experience of being part of some kind of media at some point in your life that had a way deeper impact. Can you, can you give me some examples of that? A podcast, a YouTube channel, a something, yeah, a TV show that has had a deeper impact on your life? A book, I was just saying, uh, The War of Art. That was like a big impact when I was building my business. Uh, just, just the principles, it's very simple stuff, but once you read it, um, it definitely changes your perspective. Yeah, okay, good. Others? Ah. <laughs> Shucks. Yeah. It, you know, it propels us towards financial freedom. And that's a huge, it's not, you're not a blip in our lives, right? It's mm -hmm. a bigger picture thing. That's exactly where I wanted to get. I wanted to get past that shallow, basically valueless impact that I was having on my viewers' lives. Um, and there was a day when I told a friend where I said, I just don't know how long I'm going to spend in my career dishing out random photography tips. You know, like we did a video a little bit earlier where we just like came up with a video for first time home buyers mm -hmm. and in like a few minutes and I was like, man, is that what I do? Do I, am I just really good at, at presenting a tip in a way that sounds interesting and I just do that over and over again for decades? Is that my job? Because that stinks. I want to do something that has a much deeper impact and it can be in every space that you're in. There is no website that the niche itself is the problem. It, it, you know, for on improved photography, I heard from a guy who um, had surgery and, and he was having surgery and he was suicidal and he found photography and it just meant so much to him and he got deep into the community we had and he started a business in photography and it totally changed him from photography. It doesn't really matter what your site is, all of them have that, the ability to do that. So, um, I, I, the example that I thought of this is when you see a brand that's just doing it right, and I hope you all recognize the Dave Ramsey brand because in terms of branding, I don't know how you get much better. I don't know how you get much better. You can agree with him, hate him, like him, whatever, but you, I don't know how you improve on branding from what they have. They have nailed it. And it's starting with this, and we'll go back to that example as we go through um, how well they do um, on every aspect of, of branding. But it starts here on the how deep of an impact are you even gonna have on their life? Because right now, your logo if your impact is this deep on their website, I don't care if your logo is a little bit prettier than, than it was before. If you did a logo redesign, okay, whatever. This blog I went to had a better logo. I guess they worked on branding. It just doesn't matter. That, that brand, that symbol means nothing to you, right? 
And so we've got to get way deeper in people's lives. And when you're there, like you think about all of big tech, um, you think all of big tech is like, you know, can we capture 0.1% of the browser market, right? Because if I own the browser, I can control where they go. I can see where they're going. I have the power, right? Like you think all of technology is like, huh, well, first I have my website. I can latch it onto a bigger platform. Maybe I can get a cookie on their browser. And then a little bit deeper is, ooh, what if I could get my own app on their phone? Now I'm deeper. I'm hooked into them deeper, right? Now it's like, what if I could be the person that made the browser? Or the ultimate in all of technology, I made the OS, right? It's like, how deep can you get into that person's phone, right? If you own, if you own the OS, it's only Google and Apple that own the OS, right? And they can control the world because they control the OS. So it's like a lot of what we do is like, how deep can you get into that person's phone, right? Um, but this surpasses all of it because when you can get into their heart, you've just, I mean, they're going to control where they go ultimately, right? And so when you can have a real impact on somebody's life, it doesn't matter about an algorithm update. They're going to find you. You mean a lot. You're an important person in my life. They will find you if you have to move platform or you change your product offering or whatever else. They will find you wherever you are. So what impact will you have? So um, can we hear a couple examples of those of you who feel like, that's my impact today. And maybe we can talk about or maybe you have an idea of what could it look like to have a much deeper impact. Or maybe you don't know and we can talk about that. Um, so basically people come to my site asking very specific questions on electronics. So what type of sound bar can do this? Well, they get the answer to that question and then they leave. Mm -hmm. Maybe they get the answer to the question, click an Amazon link and maybe I make some money, but very minuscule impact. Yeah, but maybe you could take a group of those people who want to take it really seriously and you could teach them to make their own local IT business and suddenly has a really deep impact on their on their life, right? What else? You guys haven't been that quiet all weekend, right? <laughs> it's like silence now. <laughs> My website's similar, so it's um, it's about courses, but it's um, very beginner queries. So it's not typically people that own them. It's people and probably kids. You know, I don't know for sure, but people thinking about thinking about getting one. So they're not at the stage where they come back multiple times. They're just going to be like, what breed does this best? And then they're going to go, oh, cool, that's great. And then they're going to bounce. They're going to jump. Mm -hmm. And because they're not in the industry, they're more looking for information, maybe for book report or for whatever they're doing or some virtual reality game, then there's no impact there. They got what they needed and they leave. Mm -hmm. So what could it become? How could it get deeper? I publish more articles, more people come. Lots of more shallow stuff. <laughs> but how could you get deeper in that industry? You know, I've gotten deeper in other aspects of my private life. Like I've gotten government contracts. I formed a 501c3. Um, and I did that for many years and provided a lot of value. And the government wound up taking the uh, volunteer work that I did and now they copied it and implemented it in their system so now they're doing what I started. Ugh, the government. <laughs> so I did have an impact in the industry but just not affiliated with this website, right? Okay. Um, so I don't know how to translate that into this particular... So what, tell me, impact. what's the industry? Horses. Okay. Can a horse have a deep impact on people? Yeah. Are there a lot of people who give up their horses because they cannot figure out how to take care of the darn thing. And you could have a big impact on somebody's life there. Or you could take people who live in a city and you could teach them how to, how to have a horse or how to lease a horse or whatever, rent a horse on, on weekends and stuff. You can give them an awesome experience and something could be really calming for them in their life, but who just don't even know how to get in there. So absolutely you can do it. Jaren, I saw you you're starting to raise your hand. Yeah, I, was saying, uh, I have a blog in the food niche and it's extremely simple answers to simple questions that people do need, but uh, it's about as shallow and quick of an impact I think as I can have. How can yeah. How long does it take to reheat tortillas? Like, woo, <laughs> right? But like, what if I could 
what if I went on a mission to make every family on Amer in America eating their own food that's like actual food and not the chemical crap that we, the, we eat, right? What if I could teach moms and dads how to spend an hour and prepare a home-cooked meal all week long for your, for your kids, right? What if I could take young families and teach them how to save half on their food costs? Like, you could have a mission behind that that starts out with, you know, how much water do you put in top ramen, right? And it could start out really, really shallow, and it could get much deeper if you have some kind of mission behind what you're doing. So the impact, um, it needs to be something mission-based. It has to be something that maybe you care a little bit about. Like, I, you know, may, it doesn't matter that you wake up and you're like, I want food security for America, right? But it's like, but if you could provide that, that'd be pretty sweet, right? So sometimes I think the hesitation we have is like, yeah, but I've, I've always kind of treated this as a passive business. I just, I'm not feeling like that mission thing. So think of it this way, like if I did accomplish it, that may make you feel pretty good though, right? So think of it that way. So All right. With a yep. narrowing the scope there potentially. It's like when I think about, for example, in the pet space, a great mission could be like, how do you get people exposed to like more service animals? Because there's a lot of you know, really impactful benefits to that. But is that going too far down the rabbit hole potentially? For certain cases? Maybe, I mean, maybe if you go very far down, you may cut out a lot of search terms and things you could do. So you want to be that little bit bigger business and you say, but now how do we do it? You know, maybe your mission is, I do not want the shelters full in February. Everybody gets a puppy for Christmas. Nobody knows how to take care of it. By February, the shelters are full. My mission is to make sure every family that gets a puppy this Christmas is going to have a good experience and know how to make it a good part of that household. Okay, identity and branding. Those are the two things that we're going to talk about today. But the real thing here is that identity is better than branding. Did you see what I did there? It's clever, right? I was feeling pretty good at 5 a.m. this morning. Um, identity is worth so much more than the branding. If we're talking about the branding being colors and logos and styles and things like that, identity is worth so much more than that. So we talked about how would you impact her life? And now we're saying, how would she describe your website? Uh, there's a great book called Story Brand that if you're interested at all in branding, you've got to read that book. Um, and this, that really clued me into this question. Like, say somebody's on your website right now, um, like those people real time, those little dots on your map right now, if their spouse walked up behind them, they're on the laptop and said, What's that site? How would they describe where they are right now? How would they describe it? If they would describe it as some website about puppies, <laughs> shallow, your branding failed hard, right? You didn't accomplish anything. You're just some, some brand. And the goal is, how do we get a little bit deeper? This is Income School's identity statement, and it's way more important than anything else we do in branding. Our, our identity statement is if somebody came up behind their spouse on a computer and they had been watching binging income school videos, I would want that spouse on the computer to say, oh, these fun friends in Idaho are going to teach me how to make an income online. Um, and that seems maybe a little obvious, and it is not. Um, it actually impacts decisions we make every single day. Um, is we think back to this statement and we say, okay, which one fits that the best? For example, whoa, there we go. We were looking at these two different designs from designers for the new version of the website, and we said, well, that one looks kind of corporate. This one looks like my fun friends in Idaho made it. Uh, it's not that it has to be crappy. Uh, we don't have to have potatoes everywhere. Um, but like, you get it, you get it. Like, it's like we're gonna have fun milestones and stuff everywhere because like an element of fun is like, it's kind of what we do. It's just kind of part of it. We just, we're just kind of goofing off sometimes. Um, and so that phrase, whoops, that phrase controls a lot of our choices at income school. You know, when we're dealing with customers or with customer service stuff, it's like, would your fun friends in Idaho treat your customer that way? You know, um, like, would, it, do we, are sometimes where we feel like, okay, we're getting a little bit corporate with this or that as we're growing. And it's like, would your fun friends in Idaho do, do an event this way? Uh, or would your fun friends in Idaho just like 
you know, do we need to get in a professional place and charge everybody for an event and do all these things? Or it's like, yeah, just come to the office. We'll hang out for a couple days and everybody's on rolling chairs, right? Like, it's just how we do things. Uh, so, now let's talk about what elements can make up your identity. So one is the customer journey. That's what we talked about a little bit with the mission. There's got to be somewhere that you're trying to take them. If you're not taking them somewhere, then you have no mission in your company. What, where are you trying to take that person? And it needs to be something that will have more than a shallow impact in their life. And if you want to charge them significant money and make the big dollar sales from your audience, you have to get deeper in their heart. You can't just stay surface level if you want to do that. Number two is an enemy. Dave Ramsey's enemy is what? Debt. Debt. It's obvious. It's everything he talks about. The enemy is, is not, you know, not earning enough money. That's not the enemy. The enemy is not mortgages per se. It is debt. It is debt that is his enemy. Um, and a lot of us feel like, okay, but I don't know if there's an enemy in my space. There's an enemy in every space. The enemy is whoever's teaching them a different philosophy or a different route to get to that goal. Income School, some of our most successful videos ever that launched the channel were stop doing link building because no one in the industry had ever said that. Stop using keyword research tools. And as soon as we did those two videos, we started to notice the hate was coming, but the love was coming too. Uh, that those were things that no one had talked about in SEO. Like just stop link building? What? That's, that was crazy. And not using the keyword research tools, it felt like you were doing keyword research blind. And those things that like, hey, these are companies trying to push crap on you. We did it just Google's way, what they're saying to do to build a website. And it works and we can show you the results from it. And suddenly it just became a very different business when you have some kind of enemy. On YouTube, when we're talking about YouTube, how many YouTubers are there out there today that have 300, 500 more subscribers and the only business idea they have is to put a logo on a shirt and sell it. They have massive audiences and they have no idea how to make a business around it. So when we're talking about YouTube, I feel like there's an enemy. It's somebody who's starting first with an audience and has no idea about how to run a business uh, and take advantage of that. And so when everybody else is talking about starting a YouTube channel and, and teaching that online, and they're saying, go make the vlog, and then you'll get YouTube ads and merch, we can come out and say, hey, uh, I don't care if YouTube pays me or not. I don't care if I have merch or not. The YouTube ads should be the teeniest, tiniest little portion of the revenue that you make from your channel. And that's different. That's what people aren't talking about in the YouTube space because those YouTubers just are not clued into internet marketing. They just don't speak that language yet. The YouTube community has not clued into the internet marketing as, as a large thing. So having an enemy is really important. Uh, and all those things we talk about mission-based, all of those have an enemy. Is anybody having a problem thinking of who an enemy would be for their site? Good. All right, a contrarian approach. Um, and so this is kind of tying into to the enemy. Like sometimes it's not that what the enemy is is bad. It's just you've found a better way to do it and that's what you're teaching. Traditions and inside jokes. Are there traditions that Dave Ramsey has? What happens when you get out of debt? debt you get a debt free, you go to his office and you do a, a debt, debt free scream. Um, those kind of traditions, things that happen in Project 24, we have our curry day. We have our $100 a month badge, $1,000 a month badge, the full-time income. In fact, we're working right now on mailing out a trophy of a golden bowl of curry uh, to people when they get to that full-time income. We're trying to have those traditions that just make it feel something other than, I don't know, some random site about internet marketing, right? Those traditions are something that bring people in and say, like, this is something different than what you're going to find on the web. As well as inside jokes. Just things that as you're making your channel and you're being you on the channel, when you can let them know a little bit about you, those things really keep you around. The fact that you've seen Ricky slide into a bowl of, into a 100 foot slide down into a pool of Thai curry, we're, 
I don't know what, I don't even know how Thai curry became a thing at income school, but it did. Uh, and so it's just when we're gonna use an example, we're gonna use that. Um, just having those little things that somebody feels like oh, I'm kinda on the inside now. Uh, and when you watch it for the first time and you get like, what's happening here? Like you feel like, hey, there's something different on this platform. There's something happening at this brand and you want to be a part of it and you want to figure out what's going on there. In branding, different is better than better. And we focus so much on how to just be better than the competition. And you just don't always have to. You don't always have to be better if you're different than, than what everybody else is doing. Um, and if you haven't read the book, The Purple Cow, oh, it totally changed my thought on marketing. It's helped me for years as we've decided projects to do. Um, Seth Godin teaches uh, an example. Um, you know, you're going through the Australian Al uh, or the Austrian Alps, not Australian there. The Alps aren't there. The Austrian Alps and you're driving around and you just see field after field of cows everywhere. And you spend weeks on vacation driving and enjoying the countryside. And at the end you say, do you remember any one specific cow? No, they were just all cows. But if you ever saw one purple cow, you would remember that cow, right? And so being different matters so much more. You can get your logo a little bit janky. You can not maybe be the best on video, but if you get so many of those, so many of those things on that yellow screen of an identity in your brand, and you're just doing things different, things that really catch people's attention, they're going to notice, right? They're going to notice. We were just at lunch and we were talking about like, you know, restaurants are always going out of business, right? It's like the worst business to get in. Unless you really know your stuff, the turnover rate is just terrible, right? And so we're like, what, what can we do for a restaurant that would just be so different? And we thought, well, what if you had a zero calorie restaurant? What if you went in and there were exercise bikes and yoga and uh, people doing hit classes in there? And then like, they'll serve you food for only the amount of calories that you burned. Like they come over to your treadmill and it's like, all right, you get a small slice of cheesecake, right? People pay like $10 to come in and you gotta work off the calories to get it. You can, all the food is free. It's just however many calories you burned, right? So just an entrance fee. Different is better than better. Is that better than a restaurant? I don't know, maybe, it's all, but it's, it's just different. It's something that you, when you're taking your spouse on a date, man, do you wanna to go to Applebee's again, right? Like, do you really wanna to go to Applebee's again? We're like, hey, there's this cool place, let's go. And you know, I wanna take a picture and put this on Instagram and tell people about it. It's exciting. Something different is happening, right? That's what we want. We want something different happening because life is boring otherwise, right? Okay, um, these are things that we like to do at income school. Again, remembering our identity statement is these fun friends in Idaho are gonna teach me how to make money online. And so sometimes we're just goofing off on YouTube. And like sometimes I'm sure it doesn't even come off the right way. Sometimes I think it does more harm than good for our brand uh, because it can feel like we're trying too hard or something, but like we're just goofing off. And sometimes like we were reading the 26 ways to get banned from Amazon's uh, affiliate program. And we're like, man, this video is getting too long. <laughs> Let's go get some helium and read the rest of the rules at the end of it. Just really, really fast in a high voice. Uh, it was hilarious. Uh, so we went and got helium balloons and we went through most of the video and then we sucked helium and read the other half. It was fun. Uh, uh, in this one, this 11 legit ways to, uh, to monetize an audience. I had, uh, for a prank for my nephew, I had ordered the Carolina Reaper, the world's hottest pepper. Um, and so I had him in my desk for a long time and we're like, hey, we'll give like hot tips on YouTube and then we'll eat the world's hottest pepper. Terrible idea, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky puked. How many times did you puke? It's like, it was awful. It was so bad. And the next day, oh. It was because um, I had to drink about half a gallon of milk. To, I mean, it was like an hour of just sipping milk constantly to, to not burn my It's, throat. yeah, I, I did not know something could be hot like that. It was like you put hot lava in your mouth. It was, it really, it was, it was crazy. Like, it was, I did feel like we were close to a hospital after that visit. Like it was crazy. 
Um, uh, in this video, uh, I got kidnapped um, in the video, and we were just kind of goofing around with different things. Uh, yeah, those are good times, right? I think sometimes we need to bring more of this back. Um, wait for it, wait for it. They're coming for you, Jim. Don't you notice the creepy van pulling up on you? You fool. They're coming for you, Jim. Run. Also, I looked like a dork in the video because I'm like very compliant with them. And apparently when I get kidnapped, all I say is, hey, hey. I'm really a, a, I'm really a very poor hostage. Um, in this video, I pulled Ricky behind the truck on a little tricycle. Uh, we had just good times out in the desert with two fun friends from Idaho, right? Um, and of course, the amazing bowl of Thai curry from the 100-foot slide. Um, it's on a little bit of a hill, and we thought if we put the rice in there, you wouldn't be able to see it. And so we had to cut right here because the slide didn't quite get us all the way to the bottom. So we had to slide <laughs> twice. And see, mine was fair. I did eat it, but Ricky's is just epic how he did it. He had this beautiful, like, whoo, right here. That's, That's bear, right? that move that was genius. Look at the elevation. Way to sell it. And of course, the cyber truck where we took it out into the desert and uh, <laughs> there were all the tumbleweeds on the side, and so we just floored it going through the tumbleweeds. Such good times. Was that still a cyber truck or just take over? We're taking it down. We're in the process. Um, so when you see those things, I guess a couple things from it. One is I really don't feel like, like we had any more success on YouTube because we were doing those crazy things. In fact, it kind of turns a lot of people off. You know, I came for information. Um, and, I, you know, it's just a little bit jarring um, to suddenly have some of those weird things happening. Um, and it definitely looks gimmicky or like you're pandering for, for uh, views. Um, but it's just kind of who we are. We just kind of goof around. And so um, it's, we're just, that's what, what we want to create. And so we do. Um, and so as you're thinking about like what is the identity of your brand, don't, don't feel like you need to go that route. In fact, maybe you shouldn't. Um, just do whatever is you um, and what can make kind of an identity um, out of whatever it is that, that you're doing. But don't feel like you have to do something gimmicky in order to have an identity in your brand. Okay, now we are going to get, we talked about identity, now we're going to get into a little bit of the more of the small stuff, which is the actual branding. Every person that has ever gone to look for a logo tells their graphic designer this, and I promise they hate it when they say this. They're like, when they're saying like, yeah, you know, what do you want for your logo? Everybody says, I want something memorable, you know, like the Nike logo, right? It, it's foolish to say something like that because the Nike logo is a fine shape, but it doesn't, it's not, it's not the shape that is that interesting. They have put hundreds of millions of dollars of flashing that shape in front of your face with LeBron James and Michael Jordan and all the rest to make you think when you see that shape, cool, right? This is something that's cool. Other than that, it's a blob. It's a blob on a page. There's nothing so special about that shape that has made the brand. It's that they spend so much time telling you this is cool, right? <clears throat> when, that, when Nike puts an advertisement out, rarely will you see an advertisement from Nike that says, and by the way, 50% off sale this weekend on Air Jordans, right? That's not what they're doing in their advertising. They aren't even telling you any kind of sale, any kind of necessarily any shoe. You usually don't even see them advertising a specific shoe. They're just showing cool people wearing Nikes. And so when you go to a shoe store, you want 
the cool one, right? Which Under Armour is better, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes we approach when we're getting a logo, even for a blog, like, I've got to get something cool, right? Uh, and that's just not at all how it works. Actually, what you want to do when you're picking the logo and the actual branding for your site is to pick something very normal. Because if I were to tell you of all these logos that you probably don't know any of them specifically what they are, if I were to tell you one of them is a women's clothing brand, you could all tell me it's the top left one. And if I were to tell you one of them is a storied university, you could all tell me it's the top right. And if I were to say one of them is a really hip tech startup, you could say it's the bottom left. One of them is a municipality, you could tell me it's the bottom right. One of them is a sports team, you could tell me that's the top center. And one of them is a Google property, you could tell me that's the bottom center. So logos, you don't want something super unique. Actually, you want something very normal in your industry. Because then when they see it, they know immediately what that thing is. The same is true as you're advertising even a course or a product. When we did the design for Work Energy, yeah, we wanted something memorable and cool, but I wanted it to fit in just right with other books that are similar to my book. So that as you're browsing quickly, scrolling through Audible for an audiobook, you say, oh, that's the kind of book I have. Because I read Good to Great, and that's what a book that I like looks like. So a lot of branding is about trying to look exactly like everybody else. That's actually very, very important. You're not trying to look crazy unique and different than everybody else. So um, we created a page. In fact, you might go there on your laptop to just see it. It's at incomeschool.com slash branding. I said income school like you guys have never heard it before. <laughs> I always, if I say it too quick, people think it's income is cool. Um, which we should probably buy. Yeah. <clears throat> Incomeschool.com slash branding. So um, once we have determined our branding elements, it's just really important that they remain the same every single time that they're the same. Because then when you're scrolling through YouTube and you see a video from us, you say, oh, that's income school. Otherwise, you know, if we didn't show me or Ricky's face clear enough, suddenly Nathan's on a video, Anna's on a video, Nate's on a video, you're like, who, whoever the heck that is, right? And you keep scrolling. But if we keep enough similar in all of those videos that you say, oh, that's, that's from income school, you stop. If your emails look the same, if your website looks the same, if every, everything on your social media has that same feeling, then they become part of it and they want to stop. So incomeschool.com slash branding, you should all make a page just like this. There's nothing special about the page itself, but as we're doing stuff all the time and you got to go grab your logo for the 500th time, uh, it's there. It's real quick. You can grab it, put it as your profile here or there and make sure that it's consistent every time. We have our company colors um, on there. We have the fonts that we use. Even this, this keynote presentation, we have a template for our keynote presentations and we always use that same keynote. So when we present at conferences, when we're doing slides on a course video, it's always the same. We have the, you saw the same slides from Ricky, same as me, because we have that template that we always start from that same one. And if anybody designs up a really cool slide in the company, they just add it to the template and it becomes that much bigger. Um, yeah, and then we'll have the EPS of it and everything else. Uh, we'll have it on white, have it on black, etc. So you can just quickly download it and move. Uh, so I, we found it to be really, really helpful just as we're making media around. Now, as you're deciding a, a color scheme, I'm not a graphic designer. I can just be dangerous a little bit. Um, and so I'd highly recommend going to this website, Peloton, not Peloton. Um, but it's really cool. You can just move your little slider around here, your picker, and pick whatever your color is. And it's gonna give you right here your base RGB. This, it's called a hex code here. Um, that hex code will always, well, it will almost always, depends on how companies implement it, um, but will show that same color every time. And so when I need to put an element on the website, I go to the incomeschool.com slash branding and I'm gonna grab that hex code every time. So it's exactly the same shade of blue every single time. So what you can do on this website is you'll click your, your, your picker around here to pick one 
And then, oh, I need to go here. What it will do is it allows you to pick uh, color schemes that it will do automatically. So it's really ma a mathematical formula how uh, you pick a color scheme. Um, so if I pick whatever, this nice shade of red here, then I click up in the middle and I can pick right here, this is an analogous color scheme, a triadic color scheme, tetrad, etc. And it's showing you over here, you can get the hex codes for what those right colors would be. So if you're not a graphic designer, it's just gonna give you a nice palette to use. Pick it one time and keep it forever on your website because that's the kind of thing that's gonna help uh, people recognize what your brand is. Any questions on branding or identity? Then you have all passed your test. <laughs> <laughs>